Azt mondták, hogy indegestek, hogy csak kész vagyok. Szia, Robert! Szia! Már a mai napon bebizonyította a tehetségét, így nem kell bemutatnom azt a kreatív és lendületes szemét, aki a betekintést enged Maxon Cinema 4 dével való munkájába. Robert Ranicki. Köszönöm! Köszönjük! Most kicsi van gyakorlat az egészben. Jó napot! Na, hát működik! <gül> Nagyszerű. <gül> Na jó, akkor nem fogom megmutatni még egyszer a reel mert az ment, és a szünetbe, meg már a reggel, de fogok most beszélni, legalább én fogok beszélni arról, uh, creative problem solving. Kreatívus probléma megoldás. Úgy? Úgy nem? Köszönöm. Mit jelent az? Azt jelenti, hogy, hogy fogok nem csak technikai tipszeket mutatni, csak azt jelenti, hogy nem csak egy kreatív problémát kell meg, kell, meg, meg mi volt még egyszer? Megoldani? <gül> nem, csak, nem csak kreatív is problémákat kell megoldani, hanem technikailag, vagy hogyha van valami, valami gond a szoftverrel, vagy akármivel, ez nem érdekli senkit, és pláne nem az, aki fizeti a, a projektot, hanem valahogy kell legyen egy, 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 egy film, egy, egy kép, egy rezultát valami. És arról is fogok beszélni, hogy mit lehet csinálni, hogy hogy lehet kormányozni arra azok a problémán keresztül, hogy az egész dolog sikerüljön. Szerintem az első előadás elég simán ment, um, úgy mint ez itten. Um, szóval <gül> remélem, hogy, uh, hogy a második is ennyire simán fog menni. Um, Miről fogok beszélni az első dolog? Uh, Fun with Bubbles, egy, uh, egy Media Markt uh, logo uh, claim animáció. A másik egy set extension, ahol egy, uh, egy, egy képet, egy framed uh, digitálisan nagyobbra, meg, meg uh, uh, mélyebbre kellett csinálni. És um, a harmadik lesz egy, egy making of, egy kicsike VR-ral, meg ilyesmi. És az első lesz uh, Fun with Bubbles, és én azt hiszem most elég hamar fogok angolra uh, megint menni, mert nagyon nehezen esik ezt elmagyarázni magyarul. Szóval zsip, English mode on. Fun with bubbles. Media Mark campaign logo. Um, so this was a project that I did, I think, last year. And, and you have Media Mark here as well in Budapest, right? So you know this, this, this company. Um, and this was done for a studio in Germany. It's called Liga 01 uh, Computer Film. Um, and they do really fantastic animations. And uh, although I work as a freelancer, uh, I, I, I tend to work in agencies from time to time, just to you know, see something different, meet new people, see new workflows, um, learn new techniques. It, it keeps you on your toes and refreshes yourself um, creatively as well as technically. So they asked me to come in and, um, and help with, with this project. And there was this agency involved, um, a lot of people were involved, MediaMark was involved. So it's a lot of things you have to keep in mind. So there obviously were some challenges that you have to take care. Um, so Marketing 101, never talk about problems, but challenges, okay? Sounds, sounds much cooler, you know? The challenges, not the problem. Problem is negative. So the challenge was make the animation look almost exactly like the print advertisement that they had at that time. So for, for the print advertisement and also as a storyboard, I got, in essence, I got something like this. So it was a couple of pictures. Um, so basically three bubbles and it says, Hauptsache habt Spaß, which says something like, the main thing is you're having fun. A fő dolog az, hogy az egész vicces, vagy tetszik, vagy and um, and then this thing comes in and obviously you see the product whatever it is okay so you see those three bubbles and those three bubbles were kind of the goal to reach an animation so um first i thought okay let's let's do that in after effects right because obviously that's the tool where my skills are the strongest and then i thought okay if this whole thing has to be organic and bubbly and nice it would be difficult to do it in after effects because it would be like a frame by frame animation and you know with clients and iterations oh can you make it faster oh yeah let's do it frame by frame again uh, see you in a week so um i chose to do this in 3d uh, with cinema 4d obviously and uh and that w that was the way to go and this is what i mean by also not just creative but also technical and 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 smart 
um, problem solving. You know, th there's one thing I learned is don't work harder, work smarter. So that's uh, I think that's uh, really inspiring for me to to think about that how you can save time and uh, for example just as Jonas showed earlier this morning I mean I, I was just my jaws dropped because I mean he is so efficient in in, in creating things so easily and, and I think that's a perfect example how you can with very few clicks just by knowing what to do save time and, and energy and and be really more productive so um, I'm trying to do uh, something similar here and um, basically you see this is the 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 2D and the 3D version, so it's it's uh, it's more or less uh, more or less perfect, um, although it was not perfectly perfect, but close. So um, let's see how this uh, was set up in in C4D. And um, I'm gonna jump right in, and you see I've created a background plane that is basically just as a guide, just to see what we are aiming for and what we should have, and um, and then I have this little uh, this little capsule. Okay, so this little capsule basically allowed me to, um, if I go out and show you this, and maybe I can hide the background. So you see the capsule. It's just a capsule that is subdivided um, quite a lot, and I'm going to use this capsule as my as my base shape. Okay. So what I can do, I have this capsule, and I have a spline that I created, and you can see the spline. It has roughly the flow and the shape of the uh, original um, print ad. And what I can do now is I can go in and I can select the spline wrap tool. So when I drop down the spline wrap tool into the capsule, it allows me to choose a spline, which this will actually transform the shape into. So it is actually following that spline. It looks a little bit weird. Um, I can also add the spline rail to, to guide the, um, the shape a little bit more. But here's a little thing. Um, as with many tools, just as in Cinema 4D, small button, big effect. <laughs> okay? So how, how small can you make this button? I think it was a challenge within Maxon. So this triangle is about 20 pixels. And uh, you can toggle this open. And this will reveal uh, tons of features that are actually really, really handy. Because this looks really crappy, because it's not what we want. Obviously, we want this thing to have a very thin end. And by holding down this keyframe, you can actually create this taper. So you can very easily um, create um, different shapes and manipulate it the way you want to you wanna have it. So it's pretty straightforward. And yes, it was a lot of back and forth <laughs> until I really matched this exact shape. And, um, and let, me, let me just jump ahead um, to, the, to the finished shape. Because um, it's actually uh, then I'm gonna show you the, how how it was set up. So you see, I've created multiple frames or keyframes or, or or points in here just to match this as close as I can. And it's I, I would say it's about 98% there. Um, obviously, we told the client it's 100%, but you know, don't tell anyone. It's not exactly the same, but very close. Um, so um, so this is it. So we're done. Cool. We can go. Uh, not yet because it's not really animated yet. So how about animation? What can we do with animation? Well, I asked them, what do you want? And they said, well, it, it, it has to be, it has to be bouncy, like squash and stretch and like those comical, but it's, it's a commercial for something serious. So it should not be too bouncy, you know, like make it black, but not so dark, you know, or white, but not so bright. You know, it's kind of like gray. No, no, white, but you, okay, okay, whatever. So, and it should be fun. Witzesh, yo, organikus. So they sent me a reference. So this was done by a friend of mine, iDesign. Um, he's doing great stuff with uh, Grace Gagorilla, by the way. He's, he's also a fantastic artist. And, and they sent me this, and I saw that, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I know this. And then um, this is kind of the the perfect example of a squashy and stretchy, although it's just, I don't know, 10 frames or something. Um, but, but this is what they wanted, you know? So you can um, also check out this guy here. And I think it's, it's really funny. And um, yeah, so this, is, this, is, this was the goal. And, um, and then I, I just went ahead and, and thought, okay, how can I animate this? Keeping in mind that this is for client work and they want to see a lot of versions very quickly. So knowing that this is the spline wrap tool, you can go in and you can animate the from and to value. 
So that's perfect because I know at, let's say, frame 8, I want to have a keyframe here. And let's go back to frame 0 and this whole thing is just gone. Let me just reduce the, the preview. And now when I animate that, you will see that we have this animation. Finished! <laughs> Not really. It's a crappy animation. Um, although it is eased, by default, it's one of my easiest things, so it makes them look nice by default, which is uh, a good thing most of the time. Um, but we're not there yet, so how can we make this wobbly? And, and again, I didn't want to do hand animation, you know, like secondary stuff that extends and, and, and goes back out and back in. So what I found is you can use an effector, and it's called the delay effector. Okay, so I'm just dragging this delay effector under it. So when I play this back now, you will see that nothing happens. You see that you don't see anything. So why is that? Because I have to change the parameters first. So I have to define the deformation, so I go to point, and now as soon as I have that, this whole thing eases even more. It's like a super eased version, which is cool, better than before, but we wanted to have it bouncy. So for that, we go into Effector, and then in Mode, you will see that it's Blend. And Blend is, in essence, make it look nice and blend it and ease it. But I can do Spring. And as soon as I do Spring, this whole thing looks organic, and, and it looks fun, you know? It's like, yeah. And here's the thing. Yes, it's a lot of work. The client says, hey, can we make it more bouncy? Oh, shit, more bouncy, okay. Give me, give, me, give me a day, okay? I I'll get it tomorrow. All right, and I'm going to the beach. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Nah, it's not true, I didn't say that, but you can. Um, so what I want to say is it's super easy to, to create quick iterations by just, you know, just changing one, one slider and just the strength. This looks like a hard rubber, like a thing, like a heavy thing, and this looks like a, like a, like a balloon or I don't know. Um, so you can really play with it. So that was, that was, the, that was the whole setup uh, in essence. And again, I can walk you through some of the, uh, the final versions. So these are all the three bubbles together. Um, then you can see, okay, a uh, client wanted to have some, some, uh, some space movement. So it looks like a balloon. And then they say, well, no, it's just too much like a balloon. So get rid of that. Um, so I said, okay, go back to version uh, two. Um, so more bouncy. No, 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 that, that's too bouncy. Um, then I said, okay, well, let's make it less bouncy or whatever. And then it came time for shading. Okay, and as you remember, the first, uh, the first print ad, the, the highlights on the sides of the bubble were very, very specific because they were drawn in Illustrator, so it's not really a highlight. Um, but I used the tune shader for that. And this allowed me, in, in essence, if you, if you look really closely, let me just zoom in on this one. Um, if you look here, you will see that you have those highlights that are slightly different to what we had uh, in the original version. Right? Makes sense? Um, why? Because these are real highlights. They are really interacting with the light and the movement of the whole shape. If I would have to use the, 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 the drawn highlights as a texture, then there wouldn't be no interactive playful um, animation in the highlights. So uh, in essence, yes, it doesn't look exactly like that because it's simply impossible. If there's a way you know how to create it, then let me know. Um, but this is the closest I could get and they were fine with it, um, so they know. Um, but these are some of, the, uh, some of the versions that I did then and you can see how the, how the highlights move really nicely and uh, just really play with the whole, with the whole shape. So uh, just so many iterations. Um, I think it was 40 or 50 iterations of that. Um, and also the typography, should it, be, should it be there? Should it be squashy and stretchy? Should it be sticking, uh, sticking on, onto the, to the shape? So I baked the texture onto the shape so when it comes out, it's already there. So they didn't want that either. So uh, it should actually just appear as soon as the bubbles are there. So there was a little bit of After Effects involved. Um, in, in there, um, I don't know if, actually, hang on, let me just go back. Uh, it's almost, I don't have to scroll, but if you, if you look closely, you'll see that there's some, um, I think it's right there, you know, every, 
everyone, uh, every every bubble has its own composi uh, compositing layer, and the topography was animated separately just by these keyframes here. So everything is not tracked or anything is just done manually um, to mimic that look, and also to have a little bit of offset. That was fine. Um, but then again, a lot of animation went in. And you might see um, an area with a lot of keyframes, and this might be this area here. You see that? Almost every every frame is a keyframe. And this is the intersection between the logo wheel and where the bubble comes out, right? Because I couldn't match it perfectly to that, to that logo wheel because the logo wheel is holy. You should not touch it, animate it, uh, change it, whatever. Um, so I had to kind of match it, and I was using animated masks to um, to to get this this corner um, in that area. If you look if you look really closely, you will see it here. Uh, this is where the where the bubble comes out to make it um, to make it more or less um, make it more or less perfect here. You know, so you will see some imperfections uh, when this thing comes out, but I think that's fine. No one notices if you don't pay attention to that. But this is basically the final thing. And uh, this was on air for about half a year, so it was fun. Um, I couldn't really see it uh, after a while. They had the, my, the whole street where I live, they had like billboards full of this thing. And I was uh, driving kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, was like I saw that. It was like almost following me, and I, I really couldn't see it anymore. I was like hating it. Um, uh, although it was fun and I loved it, but you know, after seeing it for four weeks, I worked four weeks on that. Can you imagine it? Um, and then uh, I think a month later, I finally saw the commercial, and I would I would like to play this for you, although it is in German, but maybe you still get the the the, the vibe of it. And uh, this was directed by Sven Bollinger. Tony Peterson film was the production, and obviously post production by Liga 01. And this is a guy who who wants basically wants the media markt and wants the perfect present for his wife. And we all know what the per perfect present is. für meine Frau. Ah, verstehe. Ich weiß ganz genau, was Sie wollen. Aber versuchen Sie es besser damit. Oh. Hauptsache, ihr habt Spaß. Mediamarkt. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, as you know, happy wife, happy life, right? So, let's talk about set extension, the next project. Are you with me? Everyone, everyone's fine? Cool. So, set extension. Um, it was for a short film called Hardway. You all know this short film, no? You don't. Why should you? Because it's a very special short film. It's been only screened the first time, I think, a month ago uh, on festivals. And it's, it's a graduation film um, by a really talented um, director. And when I was asked to work on Hardway, I was like, OK, so sounds cool. What is Hardway? Oh, yeah, it's an action musical. And like, uh, what? It's an action musical. OK, so what is an action musical? Well, it's a, f it's a musical with action. So they shoot and dance. I thought, I like the shooting part. <laughs> I'm not so sure if I like musicals, but all right, bring it on. So what, what, what do you need me to do? So um, just to get some credits out of the way, um, the director is called Daniel Fulgemann, and he was studying at the HFF in Munich. And um, so I thought, when I take this project on, I thought, hey, maybe this will bring opportunities for the future because half F created guys like, I don't know, Roland Emmerich, you know, who did like low budget movies like, uh, you know, 2012 and, you know, Independence Day and stuff like that. So I don't know. Uh, did he work on Independence Day? I'm not even sure. But <laughs> he's doing like this big, big major uh, movies in, in Hollywood. So I thought, if this guy's going to make it, he might remember me. <laughs> so fingers crossed. Um, the VFX supervisor was Florian Decker, who is a, who's a friend of mine. And he asked me if I'd like to, to work on a little little shot, a little scene. And I said, yeah, of course. Yeah, pff, bring it on. I have some time. And um, he showed me some, uh, some, some reference photos. I, I knew it, was, it had to be a set extension, so extending an original footage element out with some 3D elements. Right, so that's that's the essence of, of a set extension. I haven't done that in a long time. I thought, yeah, let's 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 do something different for a change. And um, so he showed me the final frame, um, the, the the plate that was shot um, with uh, I think with some Ari cameras. And then I asked him, okay, that, that looks cool. So apparently they're dancing. Uh, but what 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 do I need to do? Like just add some clouds or? And he said, well, no, just you know. 
extend this building down, um, remove this area here, you know, this building, um, this one here, and then this one in the back as well, lower the floor by 20 meters, um, get rid of all the crew on the right side, you know, add the wall here, here, and extend this one. I thought, ah, okay. That's fine. I can do that. So um, I thought, I thought I can do that in Photoshop. So let me let me see if I have that file still with me. Um, otherwise, I just walk you through. Um, so I thought I thought I will I will do that in. Um, actually, I don't. Doesn't matter. Um, so I thought I'm going to do this in Photoshop um, by by simply using the uh, the vanishing point tool. You know the vanishing point tool. Yeah. So I thought I'm just going to add a couple of couple of uh, points here for the perspective to define the 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 angles and then I could easily create the the first wall down on the left that was that was done in like honestly like five minutes and then I thought wow 10% of the image done in five minutes so maybe in day and I'll be <laughs> I'll be done with the rest and then I discovered like that this wall here and especially this wall but this whole right part was basically impossible to to really do in Photoshop. Well, you could paint it and really draw it, but then again, it would be like a whole drawing, like a real matte painting, and then, I mean, not, I'm not a painter, but that would take just so much time. You know, like insanely a lot of time. And then I thought, okay, I, there's no way I can do that. So I thought, well, okay, how, how, can, I, how can I do this without any, any big hassle? And then, then I found, okay, maybe, maybe I should do this in Cinema 4D. So, going back to Cinema 4D, I found out that this is a locked camera. So, hang on, I cannot do any motion tracking or anything that, you know, makes things easier to recreate the camera. So what I had to do with Cinema 4D was use a similar feature than, than you have in, in Photoshop, which is similar to Vanishing Point. Basically, you can create um, lines where you can, um, let me just, find that and, and do it for you really quickly before talking so much. So this is the the image. And let me just open this up for you and just really demo it. You want to see it, right? Okay. So let me just quickly do that. Um, so let me just go ahead and add this. So just really quickly for the, for the vanishing point stuff, um, this is what you would do. You would go ahead and go to Fluchtpunkt. Okay, so this is the German version. So <laughs> Fluchtpunkt. So bear with me, but um, I'm just defining these points here. Okay, just like that. And if it's red, it sucks because it's uh, <laughs> it's it's basically wrong perspective. And as soon as it will turn blue, let me just play with it a little bit, I'm trying to find the proper angle now I have it okay so something like let me use a smaller radius because there's some camera distortion yeah this will do it I guess okay so now it's more or less perfect I'm doing it a bit faster than I, than I would normally but now you can just extend that and hold down the the option key or the command key and you can go around the corner okay so this is this is very simple and you can just you know extend it in any in any direction that you want so having done this i thought okay um like i said before this this should be like a you know walk in the park so i just cloned down this element you know just like this and i cloned this down and of course you have to clean that up and and add some details but but in essence this is how you would do this really really quickly in, in, in Photoshop, right? So this is a good way um, to work like that. But once I have finished this wall, um, I wasn't quite there yet. So what I had to do is I had to, um, to save that. Uh, let me just save this as a uh, temp. That's fine. And we need to check out the resolution. So it's 1920 by 810. And we go to C4D and create a new project and let me just create a new a new background 
and I'm adding um, this image. Nope. Okay, so we see that. And the important thing is we need to set up the same aspect ratio as we had in Photoshop. So it needs, it needs to match it um, quite exactly. Okay, just like that. Cool. So uh, what, you, what you can do then is um, you go to, okay, let me see if I can find it. Jonas, help me. What's it called in English? Camera calibrator. Uh, oh, there it is. Because I'm using the German version normally, so I switch it for, for English. So yeah. So here you have the camera calibrator, and then you can also um, specify the image. Hang on. Calibrate image. Uh, why does it do not? I need a camera. Oh, right, I need to put it there. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I haven't done this in a while. So again, I, I placed this in. And, uh, and now I can use the Calibrate tool. And it's, it's a very similar approach to, to what we have in, in, in Photoshop. So in essence, you can add a line. So you add a line here. And then now you hold on Shift to define what the, the line is, right? So you can see here, known length x. It's not x but it is the z-axis, okay? And then you add another line, and then you define that this is the y-axis, okay? And it's still, it's still giving me red. So what does red mean? It's similar to Photoshop. Again, there's a lot of similarity. So in Photoshop, you know, red was not cool because it was an impossible, um, impossible angle or, 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 uh, or view or perspective. And it's very similar here. So unresolved, insufficient lines. So you need to, to give Cinema 4D more information because, again, there's no movement and no parallax where the camera can be recreated. So um, I'm not sure how many lines I added originally because it's been a while. But um, basically, you can just add as many lines as you want. And the more lines you add, the more you help um, C4D to find that, uh, that perspective in essence, right? So another Z. So you, we're getting some, some yellow here, that's good. And you can also add grids, which is extremely helpful because then you can define a bigger uh, portion of perspective. And I'm gonna use that here as well. And by the way, I'm using the brand new Intuos Pro Wacom tablet. This message was brought to you by Wacom. It's the thinnest tablet that you've ever seen. It's really, it's really good. No, it's really good. Um, I've been working with tablets since I was, how old was I? I don't know, 19, nine, 19, actually since I was 20, so since 18 years, so you know how old I am now. Um, so it was a really gray and small tablet at first, but it's, for me, impossible to work with a mouse. Um, so that's why I'm using this. It's much more precise. It's so precise that I can't see the button. Um, so here we go, and then again, define this is the, the y-axis, and this is the z-axis, and boom, all of a sudden, everything is green. So it kind of resolved the position, and you can see the center point here. And um, then you have to add a pin. Uh, and actually, before I do that, I'm just going to add another line, and I'm going to add this line here on this tent. And just going to define this as the y-axis, and define this as a known length. So I know that this tent is 2 meters 50 high. Why do I know that? Because I looked it up on Amazon. <laughs> so two, meter, 2 meters 50, and then I can add a pin. Okay, so here's that little pin, and um, you, can, you can snap that onto this position. And what this pin basically does, it defines the, the, the source point of this whole thing. And... Um, it still says unsolved, so I don't know, maybe I missed something, but I, I tried anyway, and then hopefully you, you get the idea. I'm doing this very quick. Um, so you create a camera mapping tag, create a background object. We have that already. Um, now if I switch to the camera, and let me see if that works. Yeah, it's more or less the, the same perspective, okay? So I've recreated that. If I move this now, this will perfectly match this whole thing, so I can add buildings, 
add walls. So this is how I basically went ahead and, and created this, this wall down. So uh, just adding some cubes and some shapes and this whole thing was matched, obviously rendered in Cinema 4D with alpha channels and then composited in, in, in Photoshop. So there was still some, some, uh, some Photoshop stuff going, but you get the idea on, uh, on how to create this, right? Questions? Please say no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We don't have so much time, so that's why I'm kind of rushing through this. But I wanted to show you this, so, um, so that's why, why I explained all this. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Um, we needed 3D buildings. How do we get 3D buildings? Well, I looked at the architecture of how this whole thing is, is, is created and um, basically recreated just some of that. And thankfully, we had so many images that it was, it was um, quite easy to follow the, the architectural style. And uh, um, I think there's a little uh, breakdown now that shows you what was 3D and what was rendered and actually going from the original to the, to the actual final frame, almost final frame here in this case, and um, just to point out a little detail, um, what I like to do is, if I pause it right here, you see that? And let me just zoom in right here. So there's like a graffiti and it's like E-N-M-R. So it's the initials of my family, so I put those in. So they're conserved forever. And uh, and if I do some UI animation stuff, some heads up displays, you know, there's like birth dates of my kids and I always add little info like my name somewhere or the name of my, of my kids or, or my girlfriend and stuff like that. So it's, it's really, um, really fine to ch kind of like immortalize yourself in your project. It's a lot of fun. So talking about 3D buildings, um, the architecture was, was pretty straightforward. It, it's been like an old factory in the eastern part of Germany. Um, so everything is brick layers and, and everything is like pretty simple and, and, and just for the purpose of, of having a factory there. So I looked at it and, and I found that they all have these little, this little things here on, on top. You know, they all had those couple of steps in there, so everything was more or less this, the same. So what I did was I created a 4x4 four four meter wall part that was tileable, so I could actually just recreate it with a variation, which means it had three windows, another variation had um, three closed windows for whatever reason, they just you know put the bricks back in, um, and, and another. And if the closer you get, you see it's, it's not a perfect model, it will probably not hold up as a, as a close-up shot, but that was never the point. So again, that's also something of working um, sufficiently and effectively is, is not to overdo things. Um, I have a friend who, um, who actually worked with me on the titles thing I showed this morning, and he's, he's a perfectionist. Well, I'm a perfectionist as well, but he's, he's like, oh, it needs to be physically correct, and you know, everything has to be, and, and I agree that it has to be perfect, but for me, it has to look perfect, so that's different. Because no one will know, we're all magicians, you know, we, we do just, you know, and everyone has to like it, and no one's gonna ask like, hang on, was this physically correct light or not? No, it just has to look good doesn't matter how you did it. So that's kind of like we fight all the time <laughs> about this. So it's a lot of fun. Um, same goes for textures. Textures help you a tremendous amount of, of getting the look right. Uh, and again, uh, we had a lot of textures from the photo reference, um, but I wasn't quite sure how to get those. And, and I stumbled upon a little app um, that, that just came out um, by that time, or actually was out already, but I, I didn't know about it. And it's, it's, it's from Adobe, and it's the, the, the so-called Adobe Capture app. And this allows you to take a photo and uh, use it as a texture or maybe create a, an outline graphic, vector graphic out of it. So it's a very, um, very straightforward and, and, and simple approach also, but very powerful. Um, although it's a phone, but it's crazy. But yeah, you can do it on your phone and you can just tile it and you can rotate it and you can really have a, a preview of how this thing looks like. So if you see this beautiful carpet with the stars and you just want to create a texture of it, you take a photo and you can, you know, use it in your 3D work. Um, so that's, that's, I think, really cool. Uh, again, you can see some of the options that you have with rotation and you can save it down to your phone or you can save it to your Creative Cloud. And again, if you have Creative Cloud, you can use this app for free um, and, uh, and just go for it and just play with it. Um, upload it to your, to your computer, to your phone, to your library and, uh, and just go ahead. So this was how, how the textures were done. Um, obviously, there was another building on the right side that had to be recreated that was also similar in style, but different. So it had like this long windows, every, every other window was shattered. 
So I had to paint in in Photoshop some of the windows, window shattering, repeating the textures, flipping, rotating, just to make it not too repetitive. Um, because obviously this, this thing is like very distorted perspectively, but again, this is how it looks like in close up. Uh, I used some of the, uh, the new dirt shader in, in R18 for that. And um, that helped a little bit to get some of, the, some of the dirtiness in there, but mostly it was pretty clean. I like to dirty things up in, in Photoshop because I just had it, thankfully, just a still and I can just use brushes uh, with pressure sensitivity and just add some, some dirt and some grunge to it just to make it look really nice and, and, and natural. Obviously, everything has to be aged because nothing is really perfect in condition. So here's a little breakdown um, of some of the, uh, the process and you can see the, the, the actually the, the, the floor level go down once again. So the first version was a little bit higher and then the director said, yeah, I like it, but uh, yeah, can you make it even lower? And I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was not that easy. And then, oh yeah, can you remove this building? And can you add water tanks? Because this whole film should play uh, in the US, like in a, in a Detroit kind of area, or I think uh, suburbs of Detroit, that's what the film is, is, is uh, situated. And a little backstory. So it's about a SWAT team, a special weapons and tactics, that's what SWAT means, uh, like a special forces team that are looking for, for a bad guy or bad guys. And um, they, they fight those bad guys with a mix of shooting them and dancing them, you know, so it's kind of, kind of a bizarre thing, it's really fun. But the thing is, this whole film is shot so beautifully and, and, and it's so cinematically, it looks like a, like a super high-end budget uh, movie. And um, and that's a little bit of the background of this whole film. And this was a very crucial scene because uh, you'll see in a little preview afterwards. Um, and um, yeah, so <laughs> that was a little bit of Photoshop work involved, as you can see. Really a lot of Photoshop work. Um, in fact, uh, I have prepared a slide at where you can see some of the layers. Um, as you can see, um, the layers are all, you know, named like Ebene 95, which means like uh, layer 95. <laughs> so if I would open this up again, I would exactly not know where anything is. Thankfully, I've never had to open it up again after finishing it. But uh, you can see that there are some more layers involved. Um, yeah, so, and, and this, this was towards crunch time. You know, I always, in the workshops and stuff and talks, I was like, name your layers. I stopped about, I don't know, layer 100 and I don't know, something, and then it's just like uh, a new layer, new layer, new layer. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, hang on, that should be a movie. Yeah, so this is a time lapse. So you see how much retouching and editing and adding and getting rid of. So I'll, I'll let this play one or two times so you can see what was added. Oh yeah, and then at the end, I completely forgot. They said like, oh, can we add some trucks in the back? <laughs> yes. What else do you want? Bring it on. I can add anything you want, but it's like, just like, finish it first. Yeah, so it was, it, was, uh, it was fun, but yeah, towards the end it was kind of like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And the skyline is also uh, added in the back. It's actually, I think it's the Detroit skyline. So let's have a sneak peek. Um, this is still a, a, a scene with some unfinished material with some green, green screen stuff. So I didn't, I didn't receive the final film yet. Um, so you have to bear with this. It's about, I think one minute long. Um, it's a little bit brutal. So uh, no kids in here, I hope. Um, but you get a feel for <laughs> what this, this vibe of this film is. And it does very well in festivals and, and stuff like that. And I hear it won some awards. Uh, well, very well received. So um, it was a fun thing to work at and certainly something different than animating claims or logos or products. So uh, here's a sneak peek. With me, sing for your family. Robert, what do you fucking mind? Trust me and finally, finally.
Thank you. Great job. Got to admit it, Robin. Well played. What, am I missing something here? You distracted him, I took the shot, right? He was singing, Jake. So? You don't shoot somebody who's singing or dancing. Everybody knows that. Exactly. You don't shoot someone who's singing or dancing. Everyone knows that. Simple as that. So, uh, yeah, thank you. I think, I, th I think it was fun. Um, I'd like to point out one more detail, because um, I see I have about one minute more for, for this part. Um, I can't show you the very details because I don't know the, the final numbers anymore. But in terms of lighting, maybe I would like to point out one more thing. And this is about using the sunlight, okay? This is an underestimated feature because, in fact, it's just not a sunlight, which is like an endless, infinitely far away light, but it will also allow you to, to specify details at what time you want to have the sun. So right now, this is the sun's position specific to that time to this latitude longitude. Ah, we have latitude longitude, which means, okay, we can actually punch in some coordinates. So I looked up on Google Earth where this factory is. I copied the coordinates. I put them in. I looked into the metadata when the, when the shot was filmed. I think it was 1350 or something, 150. And then I had the sunlight at the exact same position at the same time where it was when this thing was shot. So that's crazy. And then uh, I could add the, the, the matching shadows, everything was there. And uh, another thing I used was the shadow catcher uh, feature from R18 to have transparent shadows in Photoshop. Um, so that was another thing I used. So I just wanted to point these two more things out for you um, that can also help you um, speed up your workflow uh, using this sun details um, setting here. Cool. Are you still with me? You still have energy for 17 more minutes? So let's talk about virtual stand-ins and VR. So what the hell does that mean? So virtual stand-ins and VR, basically VR, everyone knows what that is, but virtual stand-ins is basically something that you would use if you don't have a real stand-in, like a real person, a real photo, or whatever. And um, for this project, um, there's the VersaStack Cinema Graph project I would like to talk about. So who does not know what a Cinema Graph is? Please raise your hand. It's fine, you can be honest. Who knows what a Cinema Graph is? Must be like the rest. No. Let me explain. A Cinema Graph is something like a live photo, something like a, it's like a photo, but there's some animation going. Okay, so for example, if you film the ocean, you would have, everything is like still, you have the rocks, you have the beach, but the waves are moving, you know, but everything else is like a still, and this is, this is the principle of a Cinema Graph. On the iPhone, it's like the live photo feature and stuff like that, so that's a Cinema Graph. And um, this was for also a client work for AVNet Technology, uh, also via an agency which is called the Wegmeister, and the photography was done by a friend of mine uh, goes by the name Calvin Hollywood, not his real name, by the way. Um, but this is how the final thing looks like. And it was for a company that, that does technology products, right? So each of those characters um, is supposed to, to be a metaphor for a certain product cat category like tech products you know like service and I think the girl is for you know for slick uh, slick interface and you know, elegant and the, the big guys like for storage you know because his his, his big and the, the middle guys for I don't know for everything I, I forgot but um, <laughs> but basically when they when they came to me with this project uh, they asked like hey would you like to do like a, like a sci-fi superhero stuff and I'm like oh I'm sold at sci-fi and superhero stuff you know so I love love movies like Star Wars and so on and and um, and again this was after some some rather boring client work so I thought oh cool yeah, let's let's do something that is more fun um, you know just just to keep the creative juices flowing and then I thought okay and initially they wanted to have a stock footage backdrop and, and a photo of these three guys and my initial project was just to add some effects to the hands and if I play that you will see um, what the final image looks like and this is also or act actually just on the website as a background and you can hover over the persons and if depending on which person you hover over you will see the corresponding product category. Um, so my original task was 
add some glow and fire to the hands, um, as you can see here. So it's burning, and then you, the lady has some some light streaks going, and there's some effects going, and um, yeah. So there's a lot of lot of detail happening. And then they said, well, we can't really find a proper backdrop image. So can you not just create one in 3D? <sighs> So what did I say? Yes, of course I can. Um, and then I thought, oh, damn. <laughs> what did I bring myself into? And then, um, but it was fun. It was fun. Don't get me wrong. It was a lot of fun. Um, creative freedom. So I thought, okay, uh, let's create this sci-fi futuristic server room. Put them on a platform for whatever reason. Um, have the lights flickering. Have some dust, um, some smoke, and all the effects on the on the body. And then they said, well... We couldn't get the costumes right, so we're still missing some. Basically, they had like this latex spandex onesie that looked really crappy, especially for the guys. Well, the girl looks sexy though, but <laughs> but the guys was just like simple, like like this. And and, and that, can you add some armor plates and stuff? And like, okay, so I can add that as well. No problem. So uh, a lot of a lot of these things were added, and this is actually the original backplate, so it's a little bit wider, and you see a bit more. I like this more, to be honest, but the, the client chose the, um, the little bit more zoomed-in version. And I have prepared a little making-off video for you, um, so you can see some of the process that was involved in the making of this. So yeah, that was it. And uh, I'd like to show you some of how this was done. As you could see in the making of, <laughs> apart from the guys being blown up a little bit, um, the, this was, a matter of fact, the virtual stand-ins principle. So before the photo shoot happened, I more or less pre it all in Cinema 4D. So basically, I, I, I built the whole set one-to-one, -one, so one meter was one meter, and uh, basically created those three characters, put them in, and then I, you know, framed the shot and looked what distance do I need to have and, and what, what uh, focal length and what, what lens and everything and just gave this information to the photographer. So he just put this thing, just click and just went. So because it was all pre-done before, more or less. And uh, I'd like to show you that. So um, let me just close this and this as well and open up the, uh, the project. And this would be... Let me find this. Talk. So this is the this is the room. Okay, so it's it's pretty straightforward. So I, I'll quickly walk you through the room before talking about the characters, so you so you know where we are. And um, so this is this is how it's built. Uh, it's like a circular room. Uh, we can travel around. There's this, I removed this robot, um, but they didn't like it. I loved it, so I still left it in. <laughs> and um, so yeah, this is how, how it's built. And I used some elements from, from a Element 3D package from Video Copilot. He has the, I think it's called the Motion Graphics Pack, and for whatever reason, he has some tech robotic sci-fi models in there that are crazy good. Uh, that you can you can buy, download, and um, just put them in. Some of the f things I modeled myself, um, and I will quickly walk you through the setup of this room. So, in essence, you you have. Let me just use the solo solo mode here. Um, actually, solo hierarchy should be working. So we have the servers, right? And the servers are just an array. So if I if I toggle this off, then you will see that it's just one server. And um, it's not a server, it's just a model, but I 
call it a server. And if I use the array and rotate it around 15 times, you have 15 copies of this thing. Uh, the same goes for, for this top ring. It's just a simple model. The wall is also uh, just with an array. So again, it's just a simple wall model with a nice texture on it. Uh, the pillars, um, so these were just easily modeled, um, just some plain, simple shape. And then again, using the array tool to, to create this impression of 15 of those things sitting there. So this is how it was done. And um, this is like a 3D set. So I didn't intend to do it in 3D, but it was just simpler to have this whole enclosed thing realistically set up and made. And, um, and then I thought, yeah, I can, I can just work with this and, um, and fly in and just, just place the camera wherever I want. Let me just go in and you know I could, I could see if I would be like a lower angle or higher angle to make it more heroic. So whatever I wanted, I, I could place in. And then I thought, okay, well, how, what do I place? Do I place this guy in here? No. Of course, in the content browser, you find much better models. But I thought, hey, let's try something new. For every project where, and this was like a fairly low budget, for low budget project. And for me, I, I always tend to find, like, like to make justice for myself why I take on this job. So it's either fun or the creative, the creative idea or the pursuit or the money. Um, sometimes it's all three. If it's a great creative project, it's, it has a great budget and it's fantastic, but not all the projects are like this. So this was a pretty bad budget, but it was a fun project. And then I thought, okay, so I have to have a benefit other than money. And this was learning, learning by trying new techniques. And I just had this um, conversation uh, upstairs uh, half an hour ago about how you balance your time and how you, you know, balance life and work and money and family and everything. It's just so crazy difficult. Um, and I said, you don't ever have so much time as a student to learn new things when you're a student. So when you're starting to work and you have to make a living, but you have to pay rent, you have to pay food, drinks, everything. Uh, beer is expensive. So um, you, need to, you need to make a living, right? So that's why I try to implement learning new techniques with projects and especially this one. So I thought, uh, why not try Fuse? Okay, Adobe Fuse. Um, if some of you know Poser, it's a similar approach. Basically, you can just create a character from scratch. Um, let's go with a female. Um, let's go add a body, add legs, and um, obviously arms um, to make her complete. And and then you can go in and uh, and just you know change things. You can you can uh, you can add uh, things, make them bigger. You know you can make her. Uh, oops, uh, sorry. Uh, you you know you can you can you can do several things. You can basically create your 3D model, and then you can you can go ahead and, and customize it. You know, make you can make the, the bicep bigger or smaller, and you can add clothing. You can make her like a like a military girl, or you can make her a fireman. Um, so you can go ahead and customize the heck out of this and, and create a really cool character. So it has a T pose. Obviously, it's not what we want. Um, we wanted to have a different pose. And then you can upload it to Mixamo. And Mixamo is now part of the Creative Cloud. And uh, let's see if, if well, it's not loading. Um, the Wi-Fi is so slow. Um, oh, hang on. It should be, in the, should be on the right Wi-Fi. That's probably the reason. So let's just wait a second or two until this comes down and I explain what Mixamo is. Mixamo was a server, is a service that, that rigs characters. So it creates all the bone structure and you basically can animate the character. You can, you know, it's not just a model, but it's like the bone structure. You can pose him to make him, you know, like hold a gun or run or jump or whatever. Um, it's essentially using motion capture data, uh, walk cycles, uh, run cycles, jumps, ducks, I don't know what. And you can, you can combine this with the 3D model that you created in Fuse, which is fantastic because now you have the option of, of actually uh, really animating or at least um, motion capture animating um, a character. Let me, oh, it's so slow. So uh, I have a couple of things here like this guitar playing fireman. So he's, he's playing the guitar and you can see here some of the original. Uh, so this is actually my library and this is like the neutral idol is just standing there and just doing like, doing this all the time. So I could choose between between this, 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 or this, you know? So I could choose the, the exact frame and it's better like something stiff or something like this. Um, 
so it doesn't matter if it's loading or not. What you can do is now you can you can click on download, and this will download an FBX file for you for uh, for usage in Cinema 4D. And I'll just do that really quickly. Um, going in to here, Fuse Warrior Idle, and just click OK. And what you have is here you have by default this is the character and for some reason transparency is on for all the channels or the materials so you have to disable those and then this is what the guy looks like and if you play that back you will see that this is the the idle position I was talking about the rig is fully there he's just you know like oh, stretching his, his arms oh, because he's so big and so strong and I use this as a placeholder so I, I basically um, just selected this guy copy and, um, and and just pasted them in, okay? So here's our, our virtual stand-in. I did this with all three, a female, uh, a big guy, a small guy, and I also used this as a reference to model the armor around it. So like the body part, like the, 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 the body armor for the chest and for the arms. This was like a reference. I kind of um, mixed and, ma mix and matched it after the photo shoot was done um, to really get it there. And this really helped me to frame the shot, you know, so I could go in and make it a little bit lower and um, to basically create the shot virtually before before doing it physically in the real world. So that was very helpful and a lot of fun to do. Um, if you have Creative Cloud, go ahead and, and, and try try that out. So it's fun. So we have five minutes left um, and we'd like to talk about this really quickly. Okay. So this is Google Cardboard. And when I first saw it, it was like, <laughs> yeah, it's a joke. <laughs> Who the hell is going to put a cardboard thing on this? It's not going to work. So I never tried it, but I thought, no, it's a joke. And it was m about a year ago. And then um, then I tried it, and I thought, like, hang on. This is this is actually amazing. This is, it, it really does work with a phone. And, and wow, OK, so what can I do with it? And then um, I really stopped right there, and I didn't do anything. And then, um, then FMX happened, which is a conference in, in Stuttgart, Germany. It's always in May. It's coming up in, in two weeks, and, and Jonas and I will be there to, to present. So I'm looking forward to that, like Disney, Pixar, Lucasfilm, all there, they're all there showing crazy stuff. And also a friend of mine was there who used to work at Pixar, but left Pixar to work at, uh, at Oculus, you know, Facebook Story Studio. So they do VR stuff. So I t asked him, like, why the hell would you leave Pixar and go to this? Yeah, because, you know, New new ground, new territory, new virtual reality. They 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 can do virtual reality animated films, um, creative freedom, and it sounded amazing. And then he showed me um, this thing here. He had the Oculus Rift with him. Uh, he also had the touch controllers. By that, they only just came out a couple of months ago, but I could try them, and I was so blown away, like unbelievable. I was I was completely like, oh my god, this is really good. The first time I, I tried this Oculus thing was three years ago, like the first developer thing. And it sucked because the resolution was bad, it was stuttery, the immersion was not so perfect as it is now. And I thought, yeah, I'm just going to try it in 10 years again. But here I was last year trying it and completely blown away, um, being inspired to, to do things like that or at least tap into that. I'm not, not a pro or, you know, um, I'm not there yet, but I'm trying. I'm just sharing my experience with you. So he showed me this film uh, and they won an Emmy for this film called Henry. And it's beautifully done. Looks like a Pixar film, but it's virtual reality, so you can move around and, and look at this guy from all the angles. So it was such a big fun. So I thought, what can I do to try uh, the first virtual reality scene myself? What, what, what can I do? What tools do I need? And I found out I have all the tools already with me, which is Cinema 4D, obviously. Um, and then I wanted to create a, a scene in Cinema 4D. And then I found, OK, I can, I can use this scene here right now. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly delete this guy and create a virtual reality scene out of this because it's a 360 scene anyway. The whole room, I didn't model it because of that. I just ended up using this again for personal um, uh, purposes, uh, purposes. So I thought, okay, what plugin allows me to create a virtual reality rig? And then I stumbled upon um, CV VR Cam. It's, it's a plugin from Cineversity. It's a, it's a service that allows you to learn Cinema 4D. Highly recommend it. Not really expensive, but worth every single penny. And then you also get plugins like this one. So what does this do? I can say merge camera rig. And what this does is it will create a virtual 360 camera. Like, for example, the one from GoPro, you know, the, the, the Omni, where you have one camera front, left, right, behind me, up and down. 
and this will basically record everything around you or two cameras with 180 lens. But this is it. So you have one for the front, left, right, over, under. And uh, basically, this will create a 360 video if you go in to plugins, create render settings, and then uh, you have the, the corresponding render settings right there that are correct. You have to make sure that the, the, the eye separation is, is matching the, the whole setup. So there's some, some details you need, to, uh, you need to watch out for. I know the time is red, but I only need two more minutes. But I think, is, is that fine? Two more minutes? Yeah, cool. Because then I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up. And um, yeah, so let me just quickly show you this. Um, actually, let me go this way. So you will see some of the, if you select the CVVR cam um, things, you will see that some of that stuff is, um, is too big. So you need to make sure that this, this circle here is within that boundary because this will define the eye separation on how, how big something will appear for you. So you set, set that up properly, go into the render settings and uh, out into CVVR cam, you have to make sure that the eye separation is matching whatever is here. And if you make this smaller, the circle will be smaller. So uh, you have to make sure that this matches. And this will create, um, in essence, a 4K video for you that you can then watch as a VR video. And I will quickly show you how that looks. And this is how it looks like. It looks like crap. You have to upload it to, to, uh, to YouTube. You have to wait for it. And you have, then you have to look at it. And it was just a crappy workflow. So I found that I can use a tool that uh, is from GoPro, actually is from Color. Um, but it's the GoPro VR viewer, which allows me to drag that file in and at least simulate that and, and, and see that scene. So I put my favorite robot arm back in. So it's snapping at us. And again, if you watch this with, your, with, your, with, your, with the glass, and I, and I put this on my PC, put on the, uh, the Oculus Rift, and I was standing there in my room. I'm like, holy shit, this is awesome. I hadn't had this great feeling of you know, the satisfaction of creating something since my student film where I created a short film and I saw the characters come alive like Frankenstein, like, oh, these are my characters, they're moving, it's great. All the commercial stuff is fine, but like this really touching thing where you're like standing in the room that you created because you know every pixel, why is the light there, why is the server there, why is it shiny or not? And it was like, I could look around and it was, it was fantastic. I was blown away, really a lot of fun um, to do it. I'm almost done. Um, so here's the, the tool that you can download, it's university. Um, I think I have it on my Facebook page. So as again, uh, I want to hit the thousand likes on my Facebook page, so please go ahead. I think four are missing, uh, you will find that. Um, there's a metadata app that you can download, but you don't have to if you are using the latest media encoder because this will allow you to specify video is VR and then you have the specific metadata in there that allows you to properly upload it to um, to uh, Vimeo or YouTube as a VR film, which is pretty straightforward. So this is what I have found so far in terms of VR stuff. Um, again, just just saying, you know, this is my, my Facebook page. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for Q&A, um, but still, if you want to follow me on Twitter or on Facebook or Vimeo, um, please note this down. Have fun doing so. Kusun um, Sepen. Figyelemnek, is that correct? Figyelemet, köszönöm szépen a figyelmet. És kb. 10 perc múlva a Gyuri, igen, mert apukám is Gyurinak hívja, köszönöm Gyurinak, Stan, Maxon, mindenkit a technikai teamnek és, és nektek is persze. Minden jót és have fun!